What is going on freelancers? This is Chino and welcome to another Anthem video. Now today's video is all about the Interceptor and in particular a build that I like to call the Winter Assassin. Now this build is all about freezing your opponent so that you can get up close the way the Interceptor likes to and annihilate them with your melee capabilities. <laughs> With this build, it's also about debuffing your enemies with electricity which causes area of effect explosions when they die. Now of course Anthem hasn't gone live yet, so what this means is all of this information is subject to change when the game does, but that doesn't necessarily mean that things won't sit just as they are right now. And as they do sit, this particular build I've chosen should be able to get you through until the end game. But of course when the game does go live, I'll be updating all of the builds on my channel to suit that and also be updating them so that you can meet end game expectations, which means I'll be adding things like my Masterwork gear. The Winter Assassin is actually a combo based build. So what I mean by that is, it both utilizes prime capabilities and detonating capabilities. If you're unsure what this is, think Mass Effect and Mass Effect Multiplayer, where basically you have one ability that leaves an effect on your enemy called Prime, and that gets them ready for the next move, which is a detonating move. So you follow that up with your ability that has a detonator on it, while they have the Prime debuff, and usually it creates an explosion of damage. Some abilities will probably have other effects as well. Now in Anthem, this is called a combo, and if you look at the floating combat text and you create a combo, then effectively it will actually say combo within the floating combat text. You can also see icons on your enemies to initiate that they have been primed, and if you use a detonating ability on those, even if it wasn't you who primed them, you can generally create the combo as well. So let's have a look at the Winter Assassin, the abilities I've got equipped and the gear I've got equipped for this build. Everything is of course subject to change like I said before, but everything that is here I'm assuming should be pretty much the same since we're so close to launch. The Winter Assassin uses the Prime ability called Cryoglave. Now Cryoglave is essentially the strongest move in terms of control that the Interceptor has available to them. Now you'll see next to the word Cryoglave that there's a little round elemental icon that actually says on the tooltip that it's a Prime capability. Now in the Anthem VIP, unfortunately not all moves that were Primes were marked as a Prime and not all detonators were marked as a detonator and that's just something they'll have to fix before they go live. The tooltip for Cryoglave actually says, locks onto a maximum of targets, then throws a freezing device. So essentially, you have the capability of freezing multiple enemies at once or a group of enemies. Now I actually like to use Cryoglave as a single target weapon. Let me explain to you why. There are two main reasons. The first is really simple. By using it only on one enemy, you don't have to wait for it to lock on. So it's a lot faster for you to get in and out of fights. 
That's the way I like to play the Interceptor, and that's the way I think I always will play. But the second reason is actually really interesting. What the tooltip doesn't tell you is that once you kill an enemy who has a frozen status after using the Cryoglave, you will get an aura called Ice Aura. What Ice Aura will do is it will pass on that frozen status to any enemy without a shield when you're using your melee attacks on them. So this is how you are able to spread the frozen status to other enemies without having to target them all at once. But the Cryoglave does an exceptional amount of damage considering, but you can only use the freezing debuff effect on enemies that are out of shield or don't have a shield to begin with. So you need to, when you come across these enemies, you need to take that shield down first before you use Cryoglave. So after using Cryoglave, your immediate attack afterwards should be a jumping melee attack. This is actually going to be your detonator ability. Believe it or not, your jumping melee attack will detonate Cryoglave. So the great thing is, as an interceptor, you've got three dodge capabilities in the sky per jump. Now, as the cooldown happens, you can spend a lot of time in the sky, and this is pretty much your best way of avoiding damage. When approaching your enemies, because you want to get into melee range, you really want to take on as little damage as possible. I like to throw Cryoglave from the sky, and either on the way down from the same jump, or directly afterwards in the next jump, hit them with a the melee attack to hit the combo. This will freeze your enemy then, and will also give you the Ice Aura. Now detonating strike is obviously my detonating ability. In Anthem, there's supposed to be an icon next to the name on the tooltip for detonators as well. It doesn't look round like the prime, it just looks like a picture of an element. But basically, detonating strike is a charged melee attack that causes the target to explode after 4 seconds. You can imagine how great this is in a group. Then it says, triggers a larger explosion on death. So as long as that debuff is on your enemy, then that will explode as soon as they die. What's great about detonating strike is that enemies with shields can actually be debuffed with detonating strike and they will explode on their friends if you kill them with that debuff on them. So detonating strike will detonate your cryoglave but also your melee strike will detonate cryoglave as well. So you can kind of choose what to do. I think it's great to use your melee strike simply because you've got unlimited melee strikes, there's no cooldown and you can save your detonating strike for tougher enemies or for groups of enemies and you can kind of use combinations there. For my support system I've chosen target beacon and the reason why I've done that is because we've already got a pretty high damage number for single target and multiple target DPS. The thing is sometimes you do come across really really tanky and meaty enemies and uh, the thing about target beacon is it gets them to take an extra 33% damage. The negative to this particular move is that once again being a debuff you can't use it on an enemy who has a shield but once you take that shield down you throw on target beacon you'll be doing that extra damage and it'll really help on a target that's already got this debuff you can tell they have it because they are glowing red the other great thing about target beacon is it works on bosses and in group scenarios meaning that your friends or your party will also do extra damage to that target talking about the weapons Firstly, my first weapon, the Devastator. Everyone loves the Devastator. It's a one shell clip which does massive damage. It's actually exploding on impact. And you can imagine using this with something like Target Beacon in a boss fight type scenario where you're hitting that boss and their weak points are doing critical damage and everyone else as well will be doing an extra 33% damage as well. The Devastator is really great because not only are you doing all that damage, but you're doing it from such a safe distance that it's actually very helpful in a fight scenario like that. For my other weapon, I've chosen the Scout Rifle. This is actually my favourite all-round weapon, and the reason why I love it so much is because it's got a pretty fast fire rate considering the damage that it does. It's extremely accurate, and to be honest with you, it actually reminds me of the DMR from Halo, which was my favourite weapon from Halo. Okay, so we're looking at basic components now, and firstly we've got the blade inscription. It's pretty obvious why I've chosen this particular component. Anything that's going to boost 
your melee damage is going to help this build dramatically since it's the thing that you are primarily doing. Now what I like about this particular inscription is that it's 10% of the base damage. So what's so great about that is it's not just going to buff your standard melee attacks, it's also going to buff your ultimate melee attacks and your combos that come from melee attacks because combos are something that damage is based off the base damage and so too is coming from your ultimate. So any base damage for your melee is going to be extremely helpful. We're also going to be looking at another way of buffing melee damage within the craftable consumables. Armor reinforcement was something to be honest with you that was just helping me when I was learning how to use the interceptor and when I was heading into those strongholds on hard difficulty and I didn't really have the ability or the gear to back myself up I needed that extra armor to stay alive. This particular armor reinforcement is special though. If you have a look a little bit more closely you'll notice that there's two lots of extra shield percentages and also extra melee damage. So that melee damage does say 0% but it's been confirmed by developers that this is just a bug and uh, the tooltip isn't showing up correctly so there is effectively a real number behind that zero that says that I am actually getting extra melee damage percentage I've actually tested this as well by going out into free roam and it has worked out to my advantage so if you think about those numbers the extra armor reinforcement from the armor reinforcement component the 10% extra shield and the extra melee damage well those were just numbers I couldn't pass up Finally, we have the melee inscription. Again, we're going for extra melee damage and this gives you another lot of base damage. This time, we're getting an extra 20%. So now you can actually see we're getting the bonus, which was that invisible number. We're getting the bonus from the blade inscription. We're getting the bonus from the melee inscription. And all of a sudden, our damage numbers are much more massive when producing melee strikes. This also, like I said, will affect your combo and your ultimate ability. And that's gonna be the way to play the interceptor in this build. Well, that's going to wrap this one up for today, guys. This has been a build guide for the Winter Assassin Interceptor on Anthem. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think the Interceptor is going to be my main javelin going forward. Let me know in the comments which javelin you're going to main if you are buying the game. If you're not buying the game, then let me know. If you are buying the game, maybe tell me what platform you're on. Otherwise, I'd love to hear from you if you have anything you want to tweak about this particular build, or if there's any other type of Anthem videos that you want to see, let me know as well. Don't worry, I've already done all the recording and created all of the builds for every javelin over the VIP weekends. That means that I've already started editing those videos and they're underway. I've just got to finalize them before I pop them up on the channel. I hope you did enjoy today's video and if you did I'd love it if you left a like. I put in a lot of effort with these videos. Click subscribe if you want to see more of my Anthem content and click on the bell icon if you want notifications when I'm uploading new content to the channel. Whew, this has been a big one. Alright guys I'm going to catch you in the next one.